They need more ammunition, more uh, long-range precision weapons, and yes, fighter jets. Um, uh, this and the and the issue really is that um, you know right now they're dying. Every day they're dying. So what what we are waiting for seems to still be attached to this. I would argue overcautious concern uh, related to uh, nuclear weapons. Overcautious related to nuclear weapons. Joining me now, my buddy BK Brian Kimber. He's host of the World News with BK podcast, also former Air Force PJ. BK, I don't know why everyone's stressing about nuclear weapons. I don't see what the big deal is. <laughs> yeah. Jesse, I tell you what, I'm looking at this with growing alarm. I'm watching what's going on in in Bakhmut. Uh, these are some of the worst casualties we've ever seen in the in the history of warfare. You know, you go back through the great battles of history and the Somme. Verdun in World War I, Antietam in the United States, Gettysburg. Uh, we're, we're rapidly approaching that if something isn't done in that city, and that's just in that one battle. This is a human tragedy in my eyes. Uh, it does, And I don't care whose side you're on. I, I think Ukraine should be able to defend themselves the best they can. But this is hundreds of thousands of people dying in a year. And in that city alone, Jesse, we're talking tens of thousands of casualties in a matter of weeks. And this is a whole new era of warfare. It's drone warfare. This is bogged down into an artillery bombardment, and there's no end in sight. Zelensky is vowing to fight to the end. I've been seeing some of the chatter on Telegram channels where various Ukrainian commanders are like, we are putting new recruits into these trenches, and we're looking at a average of like sometimes four hours of a recruit lasting in Bakhmut before they're killed, one day at best. And they're just throwing these young kids into the meat grinder. Russia's doing the same thing. Vladimir Putin is clearly out of his mind. Jesse, as I told you a long time ago, I don't think this ends unless something is done internally about Vladimir Putin. And overall, I, I don't even like watching the social media videos anymore. It's a, it's a human tragedy. It, we're, not, we're, not, we're not even talking like um, you know ISIS people, factions killing each other, right? We're talking about Ukrainians, like physics professors, teachers, uh, electric, you know, electricians, engineers, those are the people now taking up arms to defend their country and they're all just getting obliterated and it's, just, it's, it's shocking to see as a half Ukrainian myself, my people are from there, you know, 100 years or so ago it's, it's devastating It is, it, it's horrible I think about the Russian troops too because they're grabbing these for guys and constricting them in there you, the, you're right, the videos, I don't like them anymore, BK, I've gotten to the point in this whole thing where I hate Vladimir Putin I hate uh, Zelensky pretty much just as much. I only care about the people and I want the thing to end. What I can't figure out is how it ends. We very clearly are not going to stop. And as long as we're pouring America's military equipment into there, Ukraine can go on a while. Putin can't afford to stop or he's going to get murdered. So how does this end? It's unclear. You know, uh, our Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, was just over at the G20 meeting. He was able to not have an official meeting with their his counterpart. Uh, that's uh, Sergei Lavrov, longtime foreign minister of Russia. And they basically had a little bit of a, an aside, and Blinken said, basically, hey, we want you to stop. And Lavrov basically said, well, we're not going to. And Blinken said, well, neither are we. And then it was like, okay, and I guess that's what we're doing. So uh, neither everybody's dug in. And I don't know what's go what it's going to take. Now, I you know, China is now hosting basic summits, and they are looking at nations like Saudi Arabia, who has stayed neutral. But Saudi Arabia is now making significant contributions, humanitarian, but still. And this is a geopolitical war that affects everything it touches. And I just don't see how it how it ends until. And, and, and Jesse, even when it does end, who wins? Nobody's going to win. If Russia prevails, they're going to inherit a giant wasteland. If Ukraine prevails, they will have to deal with decades and decades of rebuilding that country. And there's, there's just no winners here. Support the first TV today and get instant access to exclusive specials like Who is Ron DeSantis, The History of FBI Scandals, and America's Worst Presidents. Visit thefirsttv.com slash support or download the First TV app to become a supporter and start watching today.